from Ali, and this is uh, Reese, and we're going to give you a uh, quick roundup and update of uh, West Ham women. I'm going to let Reese lead this one because he's got a lot of interesting topics to uh, bring up, and hopefully I'll be able to come up with some insight as well. So over to you, Reese. Thanks, Ali. Uh, so tonight we're going to discuss uh, the transfer window. Tomorrow is transfer deadline day for FAWSL and FA Women's Championship clubs. Uh, me and Ali will be choosing the transfer of the window, the best shock of the window and women's uh, transfer window. And then we'll be going on to uh, our Tottenham review and our <laughs> Arsenal review. <laughs> the uh, Tottenham review should be interesting because it will include a rant. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to try and rein him in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, let's go. Go on to the first transfer of the window. Ali, uh, you'll start first uh, with what you think the window is and then obviously explain the reasons why. Well, if we're talking league overall, it's got to be Man City's bit of business with Ellen White. They managed to get her just before she had her massive uh, World Cup um, success. I know she's slightly injured now, but she'll come back very quickly um, from what I hear. And she's supposed to be the um, answer to losing Nikita Paris. And I think Man City have done very well to get her before the World Cup because her price would have shot up after the performance she had with England. So that was a very shrewd bit of business there by Mr Cushing. Um, so my best bit of bit, uh, transfer, win transfer of the window, uh, it does pay me to say it, but I think Kip Graham of Tottenham will be, will be one of the best. I think... Uh, if anybody saw her at Cholton last year, she was fan a fantastic full. She was there for a few years. Cholton were very disappointed, obviously, to see her go. But I think Kit Graham could be one of them uh, players, like we saw on Sunday, Ali. When yeah. them were struggling in, in deep waters in that game, she really did, you know, driving runs and also made the option for the long ball, which... Um, we, we struggled at on Sunday with Tottenham. And I think look at both of Tottenham's goals, that they both come from either long balls or crosses. And the, the space both, both um, opens up through Kit Graham's runs that attracts all Flaherty. And uh, obviously yeah. Tottenham's good from that. Yeah, uh, probably Kit Graham's probably the most controversial um, signing of uh, <laughs> the window, uh, apart from maybe Greenwood going to Leon. Um, because uh, obviously Charlton didn't think she was for sale and it wasn't because they thought they'd extended her contract and it's still up in the air at the moment about who's going to be paying um, because I believe Charlton are going to be suing Tottenham for la uh, loss of earnings. So that's going to be a fun one. Well, it's, it's always interesting when these sort of disputes happen. Uh doesn't really normally happen in WSL. Uh, because nope. uh, no, well, normally when players leave, they're either at the end of their contract or or a transfer window is properly negotiated. But obviously, Tottenham have failed to do that with Charlton, or Ch Charlton have failed to extend that contract to <laughs> yeah. keep Graham's knowledge. So I'm sure the FA will have to negotiate that properly. Uh, part of me wants uh, Charlton to get their way. <laughs> um, like I said, that Tottenham get fined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know we don't like anything Spurs. So, what's the uh, next one we're looking for? So the next uh, topic, the biggest shock of the window. I think me and Ali could agree on this topic. Go on, I'll let you go first on this one. So we, you're gonna let me go first. Yep, absolutely. So my biggest shock of the window, I, I remember this, I think it was on a Thursday night at 10pm, a notification from the Barclays FAWSL came through and it was a retweet from Manchester United. So I thought, yep. That's quite late at night. Uh, so I, I clicked on and it said Alex Greenwood has departed. Now I thought at first, I started thinking surely this is a mistake, maybe she's extended her contract and then you know, made a mistake because I, I really didn't get why Leon uh, wanted Alex Greenwood, to be honest. But no, it was true. 
and it's playing for the stats prove it the best team in the world at the moment. Um, and obviously, Leon beat North Carolina in the international chicken, but North Carolina was uh, the reigning champions of that, and Leon took their crown. And I think Alex Greenwood in the semi final that I watched before that did did really impress. Uh, the only thing that that worries me with her, uh, Leon, is I don't think she's the most defensive of left backs. And I think at times when they play left left Madrid, gaps were being left open by Alex Greenwood. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I'm actually currently writing a series of articles about transfer windows. And to give you a preview of my Man United one is that Greenwood through the World Cup was followed normally with a for God's sake, Jesus Christ, and name the deity of your choices sake, uh, Greenwood, because she did not have a great World Cup. She's done well in the championship, leading Man United to promotion. But as you can say, they were the only professional team in a non-professional league. So it doesn't really show her full potential. So, yeah, the fact Leon chose her out of all of the left backs in all of the leagues was definitely a huge shock for this transfer window. Um we're hoping she'll do well because, you know, it's always good to see the Brits do well in the uh, Champions League. But I'm going to be honest, I think she's in for a season of bench warming and that she'll get her Champions League just medal possibly through just being on the team sheet. I don't think she'll get much game time at Leon. I really don't. It depends um, maybe on what system Leon wants to play. If I they, what if they want fall back? I think she suits that. I just can't see Alex Greenwood against Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Wolfsburg, um, anyway. in a Champions League. I, I think she'll struggle in type of opponents. Well, if you look at Izzy Christensen, Izzy wasn't doing very much before she got injured in the She Believes for Leon. So I think it might end up being another one of those. However, I do think the other Mancunian transfer in Nikita Paris, however, will do um, quite well in Lyon because she seems to already be making her mark. Well, uh, well no, <laughs> he'll never would want her to play right back next. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> the England team, but I think uh, he'll think her, sorry, Nikita Paris will do very well at Lyon. Uh, I saw her at play the Atletico, the Atletico Madrid game that Leon played in the International Champions Cup and she did really suit their system of play she was opening up uh, Atletico Madrid's defence like they weren't there at times uh, but one thing I like about Nikita Paris as well one thing you saw from the World Cup is she never lets anything really get to her she, <laughs> she missed uh, she missed the in the yeah. um, in the World Cup and I think the next game she just she uh, took up. She uh, sorry, Steph and she missed, and then Steph out and decided to miss <laughs> another one against USA. I'm sorry, but um, you might hear a little giggle. I've got my um, other half with me when you said Nikita doesn't let things get to her. Having seen her play West Ham in the FA Cup final and how she fell over when Gilly, Gilly breathed on her, I think we're going to agree to disagree on that one. That Keats does let a lot of things get to her. <laughs> Maybe not mentally, I don't think. <laughs> so, what's up next, Reese? Uh, so, next up is West Ham's transfer window overall. We start off with in the summer window. Uh, a lot of fans, well, some of them was actually ready to buy a season ticket. <laughs> and um, Matt Bid, uh quickly shut that up with some great business over the summer and I think on Sunday we saw uh, what the new West Ham women's side will look like which is a a bit of a mixture I thought on Sunday really between defensive now uh, when we just sat back for about 20 minutes once we went 1-0 up and great attacking play yeah, no, that's always been the West Ham way, though. We lack in defenders, but we do quite well up front. I think you, uh, men's fans can say the same thing, that uh, our defence is always lacking, but uh, we always tend to get great strikers. Mm. So, think, right, um, 
same theme, what would you say was our best bit of business and what would you say was the most shocking bit of business that we did? Uh, so from, I'm going to go what I've done that bit of business. I would say Kenza Daly if I, if I saw her play on Sunday. She, she was with France. So I'm going off basically what I've seen and I think it's between uh, Gallaby Archie and uh, Martha Tottenham behind the goal in the second half on um, Sunday. And she does really link up with Leon well. Mm, uh, yeah. I actually like Leon on, on the left side of midfield. I think well, she probably had her strongest game for West Ham on Sunday. Absolutely. Um, and I think, obviously, we saw that she does have a goal, an eye for goal, and she does have a really good strike on her. So, for me, it'd be Martha Thomas. Yeah, I was going to say, Martha was absolute fire for us on um, Sunday. She's got some pace on her, which um, is fantastic for a number nine. She scored that brilliant goal, linking up well with Midag as well as um, Leon. We've actually finally got a midfield in the fact that uh, rather than just having players run up and down like we did last season, we've actually got a holding midfield player in Midag and they worked really well together. So I think Martha is probably our best bit of business that we've done that we've seen so far. Um, I have high hopes for our goalie, Courtney, and also, like you said, we've got the other players that weren't re ready to come into the squad yet for Sunday. That's another player who really impressed me on um, Sunday, Courtney Brosnan. For, I, I put out on Twitter, she should start on goal on Sunday. I think um, I think she really did play well. I think she comes quicker off her line as well, command the box better. So I, I think she I think she would be West Ham number one by at least midway through the season. Oh, do you think we're going to get another situation we had last season where the uh, substitute goalie ends up taking over the number one spot like uh, Anna did for Becky? I'm not too sure right now. <laughs> um, I think I think maybe if the Arsenal... If Brosnan starts in the league, yeah. obviously I'd open. But if he starts with Morehouse, I'd, for me... Sorry, I just think Brosnan is a much better goalkeeper. And I think as a fan, I'm more confident with Courtney in goal than I am Anna. OK, that's very interesting. Uh, for our viewers know that Anna's been on this show, so hopefully she doesn't watch that one, Reese. otherwise you may not be back into Rush <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what's the most shocking bit of business do you think we've done? Either letting someone go, bringing someone in? Um... Shocking. Maybe Jane Rush does come to mind, but now we've got Martha Thomas. Does that really make sense? I don't think it does. Um, Sally letting her go to. Yeah, I think I think she would have been. Uh, last year there was a. There was a speech the season she was struggling getting used to the physicality in the league but um what once she got once she got used to that and she was starting i think she influenced every game she played in absolutely brie um was one of the best players i think we had last season and definitely was a shock to see her go i think for the fans that sort of in the know the one that was shocking for me was ria because at the end of last season we had a vague idea of who was staying, who was going through just rumour mill and things like that. Rhea came out of left field. When we saw her join for Tottenham, I know a lot of us fans were not prepared for that one. Mm. I think uh, Boonach, though, she, she really impressed me. And I, I, again, I think she's better than Rhea, personally. Let's hope so, because uh, it was uh, definitely weird to see Rhea in a Tottenham shirt on Sunday. Well, I'm going to be honest, throughout last season, I, I used to sit um, with one of my mates. I won't mention his name, safety, <laughs> give everything. We didn't um, rate Rhea as, as a right back. That's interesting. I have to say, she was a very good winger for us when he played her on the wing. And she was very good yeah. when, when Jilly was out. She, um, when Jilly was midfield, out, I think she was very good at managing people but you know each of their own 
I think maybe, like I was about to say, I think Rhea played well on wing. I'll agree with you with that. I think she was better in midfield in that cup final as well. Um, not saying she's a bad player. I'm just saying I think right back ain't her position. OK, so maybe the argument is that Matt got his positioning wrong. Just please don't let him end up at Phil Neville. I won't say that just in case Matt's watching. <laughs> oh, I can say that, it's fine. <laughs> so I find myself banding from Rush Green, it's fine. So do you think we've done well <laughs> for a window? Or do you think that we're still, because we've only got a day to go, do you think we're missing something? Uh, I think it's too tough. Maybe, maybe next month, if you ask me that question, <laughs> answer. from what I saw on Sunday, though, for 75 minutes, I think we had, it looks like we've had a good window. And I think each player suits Matt's style of play more, which is important mm. for us this year. I think the only thing that still worries me going into this season is our home form. I said to you on the last few, the Sunday's performance, I've got even less confidence um, in our home form. Would you truly be a West Ham fan if you were confident in our home form? <laughs> no. That sounds foolish. <laughs> West Ham fans, we don't know what we do when we do well. So, um, to be fair, I think uh, if we did have confidence, we'd be a bit stuck. Well, I think some fans' confidence um, in the fact of some fans think, um, well, that sometimes we'll be reaching the top seven after signing two players uh, in the Premier League. But I don't think any West Ham fixture, no matter who we're playing. <laughs> oh, so that because we played Accrington Stanley Reserves and I'm still like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, against Newport in the League Cup with the men I was in this... Yeah, well, look at Wimbledon last year. Now, let's go on to our next um, topic. Uh, I'll let you start this one, Ali. Uh, the um, review. What did you think about the performance on Sunday at Rush Green? I think you could split the team in two halves. I think going forward, we looked the best I've seen us ever. Um, I think... You know, Leon working well with Thomas. Like you said, we've got Jacinta. I am not going to learn her last name. That's just not going to happen. Um, was, again, pace that we needed um, in that midfield. I think Midag has been a fantastic addition to our squad because she's an actual midfield player. She knows that link between defence and attack. And we were looking really, really strong. And we'd rattled Tottenham. Um, even before we got the goal, you could hear Gemma Davison not very happy with her back line and the goalkeeper was definitely getting more vocal. We let it slip with our defence again. And that's where the downside is. We haven't learned from last year in the defence and the fact that I love Anna. I do love Anna as a goalkeeper, but she's got to stop rushing out. She's got to have more faith in her back line, in Brooke, in Jilly in those people in front of her that they're going to get to the ball because she's not and so she's rushing out to try and get it people are pick, picking her pocket and that's how we're going to lose points well like as i live with um anna the reason i said i'm more confident with courtney and goal is because she does rush off her line when sometimes she doesn't need to um Go on, go on Sunday. She didn't really need to rush out. Um, but I think another thing with Anna is I think she made a mistake in the cup final against Manchester City. And ever since then, when I've seen her, I think that that's still playing in the back of her mind. I think she's a very good goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe the confidence isn't there right now because when Anna f first started to be in goal I mean she she took the shirt of Enzo keeper and that takes some yep, doing so let if Anna gets her confidence back 
then I think uh, Courtney's really got some t-shirt. Um, but on the onto the onto the Tottenham game, I think for seventy minutes we were excellent. I think we we made Tottenham times defensively with some great link up play. In the second half, there was um, one where I think Boonach came forward like as a right wing back pass yeah. to Mark Thomas and it went out for Lehman. and the cross came in and uh, it was a great save by uh, Morgan and that's the link up play I want to see more of going into the Arsenal game I think the only thing that does worry me like I said is is the defence I think from long balls and crosses we struggle Yeah, but I think that that's also hard to tell because we were playing Hendricks at left back and yeah. Vettelain at centre back due to um, injuries, I think that was. Yeah, and so, that's um, neutral positions. And I, I think also that could have been maybe Matt not wanting to give too much away <laughs> in terms of in terms of I'll start my strongest team at Arsenal not now. Um, I think Lehman being on the bench was telling she he was saving her for um, Sunday. Yeah, but as as a whole performance, judging it on ninety minutes and not the final twenty, I thought we was excellent. But unfortunately, towards the late stages of the game, uh, we were very unfortunate to lose. Yeah, absolutely. I think, like I said, I think it's some of the best football I've seen us play for a very long time. Leon looked fantastic down that wing and was pinging in crosses. She was very unlucky not to score in the second half. I think she overexerted herself and. Uh, Lost her footing right uh, going one on one with the keeper. Um, Cho was looking fantastic in midfield and was getting involved and um, again holding that position with Midag. So we are we're looking really strong. We just need to plug that gap at the back. Hmm. Oh, there, Ali, but like I said, with that with defence, with players playing out of position, it is hard to tell because you never know. Vettel might slot in, in left back. Hendricks goes back into. Um, and then we look at a completely different team defensively. I think Matt was just trying to experiment uh, with a team on Sunday. Uh, sorry, last Sunday. So for me, this Arsenal game is where, as a, as a ninety minutes collectively, I, I'll, I'll judge it more than than a preseason friendly against Tottenham. <laughs> is it because we just don't admit that we lost to Tottenham? Well. <laughs> Like on Twitter before the game, for me, there's no friendly against Tottenham. <laughs> um, however, like I said, you do have to keep in the back of of your mind that it was only a friendly, and we did have a we've got a league game on Sunday that that are, will be our strongest team. Players will be back from international duty, yeah. And I'm hoping um, it could be due to Matt system we did cause them a lot of trouble at Boreham Wood so let's we just did. hope we can go one uh, let's just hope we can go one better and either get a point or even maybe I'm a bit, a bit uh, uh, unrealistic but hopefully we can <laughs> no absolutely one thing that we've stopped doing from what I can see from the friendly and I'm hoping we carry that on with the league is playing out from the back that cost us a lot of points last year because we would just automatically kick to a defender. And if Kim Little is running at you, you can't do that because she will steal that ball. And, score. and that's what happened at Rush Green last year is Kim Little stole the ball from one of our defenders through playing out from the back. We do seem to be doing the longer kicks down the field. And sometimes you've just got to boot it and deal with a throw in. I think that's why Matt played that system on Sunday because he, maybe against Arsenal we would we couldn't play that sort of system so he wanted to see how how we'd play more with the long ball from goal kicks but also I think it was clever uh, from Matt because there's a new rule uh, where defenders can come into the box from goal kicks so I think he also wanted to shock Tom. okay that's interesting but there is a no, because I've learned this. <laughs> because I had to play meeting with the referees. Okay. 
okay. So yeah, I didn't know uh, that was uh, more like um, yeah. And I, I'm not sure on this, but I think attackers can can come forward uh, to the onto the line as well. Um, that that's why I think Matt didn't do that because, like you said, Ali, it cost us a lot of points last year and the new rule two and two. He, I think he wanted <laughs> to be more uh, protective going into the Arsenal game. So we've mentioned the Gunners a lot. They are our um, opening game of the uh, season on Sunday. We're making the. Hopefully, we can get some people down to trip on Boreham Wood. Honest opinion: What do you think our chances are against the reigning champions? Um, I don't have much hope in terms of winning the game, but I think maybe if we can uh, still a point, I think we'll have. We'll have to be concentrated defensively for 90 minutes. And oh, let's be honest, we're West Ham. Most most West Ham teams just can't defend for their lives. Um, so I think it's one of them games where it's the first game of the season. There's a lot of new players. They're still adjusting to a system. So we won't touch this performance fully. We'll be more looking slightly ahead to the Birmingham and Tottenham games uh, as as the winnable games. And I think Matt will be hoping uh, that we can get a point there because for me, uh, as a, for us, West, if we pick up points against Man City, Char- Chelsea or Ar- they're kind of seen as bonus points against the, our, our teams that rival us for league positions. Yeah, no, absolutely. And look, we managed to get a point off of Chelsea last season um, away at the Kings Meadow. Uh, I remember that game because it was Mother's Day and I kind of forgot to tell my mother as at a match. Um, well, luckily, she forgave me. Um, but yeah, as um, Tony has said uh, on our stream, it is going to be a good learning curve for the um, beginning of the season. We've got a lot of players that haven't played in the uh, WSL before. So to play against the reigning champions, that's going to be a huge um curve for them um you're right defensively we've got to tighten up and we've got but we've got the pace to take them on I think you know another issue we had is that uh, Van der Donk and uh you know a few other players would get that pace on us and I think we've now got that counter which is going to be fantastic mm-hmm. another thing that's in that could be really important going into the next two games as well we do get a, a point or even a win against Arsenal, that then grows the confidence as a group um, with the team. But like I said, I'll be I'll be concentrating more on ha- um, how we defend against one of the bigger sides in the league um, because I think that's, that's going to be our key to getting any result against Arsenal on Sunday. No, yeah, absolutely. And... Uh... You know, it's, it's going to be a good start, but um, I'm hoping that we can get some other West Ham fans down there because last time we played Arsenal at Boreham Wood, I was it. <laughs> um, because uh, we, I think the men were playing Chelsea at the same time, so the only visible West Ham uh, player was me, like fan was me. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm hoping to have a bit more of uh, a moral support um, for that particular game. But looking at the season ahead, so we've got Birmingham and then um, next game after Birmingham is... Tottenham, um, yeah, with a long stadium a game, uh, which we'll briefly talk about that. So, first half of the season, what do you think we've got to do to get ourselves on the right um, footing? Um, so the first thing that I'm a bit hesitant going into the start of the season, that I've, I've said once or twice already, is the home form. I think if if we can improve that, we then start to be a dangerous, a dangerous uh, team, and I think we could get a gap more on our rivals around the positions. Um, but for me, halfway through the season, I'd I'd be happy if we were if we were mid table by then, and we was we were picking up uh, home wins regularly. So, who do you think are going to be our biggest rivals for? Um... Hopefully, we're going to finish in the top half of the table. So, who do you think are our biggest rivals for those like fourth, fifth, sixth positions? Uh, so, I'll go Reading, Liverpool, 
And I think Bristol City be, will be one of them sides again that do it, uh, excel in the league. So I think for me, it'll be Liverpool, Reading and Bristol City. Ooh, you're not going for the newly promoted Man United. You might get a few uh, of the Barmy Army going after you uh, for that one. I think, I think for me, I don't think Man United are, are our rivals for the league. I think Man United will be there. I think it will be between us, Liverpool and Reading for 5th, 6th and 7th. Fantastic. OK, so we've got to quickly talk about the big game at the end of this month because the uh, girls have been given a slight upgrade from uh, Rush Green and they will be playing um, against Tottenham in the uh, London Stadium. So we have to give that uh, a big plug because we want to fill the uh, segments that they've given us to get as much support behind our girls as possible. What do you think that's going to do for the profile of not just West Ham, but also the women's league as a whole to have them play in these big stadiums? Well, uh, for me, this game will get maybe what's important when growing a league is attracting youth. And I think a, a lot of um, dads and mums will bring their kids and it will be a family day out. Um, and I think when I look back on how I got into women's football, I was watching a lot of men's football at the time. I heard about uh, the West Ham women being in the FAWSL, that being a history-making uh, season. I went over there, <clears throat> saw a few teams play, and I, I enjoyed it much that it it's really became my, ma my main sport, women's football. And I think if we can, if we as a sport, uh, and as a team, put on a good performance, it will make fans want to not only see, but see other teams in, in the league again. And maybe, obviously, there's an FA player app now that yep, fans absolutely. can go and watch for free, unless it's on BT Sport. Yeah, which unfortunately the um, game is. But, um, like I said, I think the it as a, as a media manager... So that's what I sort of do is try and uh, market everything. I think the main football is attracting youth right now. And if it can do that, it's got a really uh, strong future. No, absolutely. And on that, also on that app, just for our American fans, it is Geo Unlocked. So if you guys want to watch our games, you finally can. They will be on the player. And I also believe they're going to um, keep the games on there. So if you don't want to get up stupidly early, you can then re-watch them um, on the player as well. I do think it's going to be a huge thing to have them in the um, London Stadium um, because, like you said, it's going to bring people back may not have gone down to Rush Green because I know for a fact from someone who does travel to the games, Rush Green is not the easiest of stadiums to get to. Um, so at least the London Stadium, you've got the bigger stations there. There's going to be more capacity for like car parking, things like that. I um, do hope that more people do come down, especially as it's Tottenham and we all want to beat Tottenham. <laughs> especially as they're starting to about players. So have we got any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? Uh, not really. I just, I'm just hoping on Sunday that I'll be missing. Um, and I, I'm just looking forward to the FAW as a whole. I think it's going to be the most competitive um league yet, and I think as well that uh, the FA TV player will grow, grow the sport, and hopefully at the end of the year we won't only have a stronger team, Ali, but a stronger sport. Absolutely. I'm definitely hoping for that. Right. That's us for this week. Uh, we will be back next week when we'll be dissecting the uh, Arsenal game and how we did and possibly what we could have done better. And also previewing the Birmingham game. Um, go on, guys. Give out your uh, social media so the uh, Man United uh, fans can give you some <laughs> abuse for not mentioning them more. <laughs> Uh, my Twitter is at Lamin Reese. I, I won't spell it out. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, mine is um, Axel's Girl. I had a heavy metal past. Don't judge. Um, also, um, you'll have links to me blogs and things like that. So, um, hope you guys have a uh, great evening. We'll see you next week. 
Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.